Guys, welcome. Thank you very much for joining me. So initial public offerings are back. Uh, yeah, let me, before I begin, <laughs> this isn't the trendiest look. I understand. I know it's not, you know, it's not probably like, a, I don't know. It's not the trendiest look. I get it. Anyways, <laughs> someone, someone told me last time I wore this. Um, I don't know, something about flannel shirts, go flannel shirts. <laughs> Anyways, so this is comfortable. This is nice. Uh, yeah. Anyways, um, so, I, you know, IPOs are back, right? You know, ASPI is uh, public today and uh, Snail went public. They both dropped, which was a good opportunity for anyone who didn't pre-order, right? And then you, know, you could have gotten in that drop, initial drop, and then just uh, go up. And that was it. If you want to day trade that, which would have been perfect. Uh, no need to hold them for long. Uh, and that was good. Yeah. Anyways, uh, ASPI guys does have a low flow to shares outstanding. So in my opinion, this isn't over with, right? It's not over with. I think that within the next two weeks, uh, there's going to be a good pop on ASPI. That's just my opinion. Don't take that for granted or don't think that it's, you know, for sure to happen and so on. In this video though, we are going to do an IPO review of a... It's actually, an IPO, it's actually an IPO I've already done a video on, but they have changed the rules, let's say. Uh, so we're going to look at the new changes. And it is going public tomorrow, so uh, ticket symbol is ATAT. Let's get started with this one. Before we do get started, though, there's always something before. Look at this. Ticket symbol RPay. This is an image. Uh, this is a screenshot, actually. This must have been initially right away when pre-market started or maybe a little before that nothing more it wasn't during regular hours so it was i think it was actually before pre-market even started um and so i i was looking at our pay and i thought to myself based on some of these things that i highlighted plus the news that came out about the stock as far as it was it was i think two days ago that they actually beat the estimates they did well plus knowing our pay because i covered repay uh, as a company before it went public, I actually did a videos on them, so I knew about this company. I like the company, and I thought to myself, well, now at 438, it's undervalued. I mean, this is just too good to be true. I would gladly pay 438 for this company. So I let everyone on Discord, YouTube members, and Patreon pre-market hours way early. I sent them this screenshot, and I told them, guys, at 438, this is undervalued. Well, as I'm speaking right now, the stock is trading at $6.84. So it went from $4.38 to $6.84 the same exact day, right? During regular hours. So, you know, if you were part of my Discord, um, you would have known about this um, in the pre-market hours. Here's a screenshot uh, of my Discord and some results in the past three months. If you want to join us, the link will be in the comment section below. Just the past three months, I have called out and sold 130 profitable picks in just the past three months. 30 open positions, but some of these are already green, so I could easily uh, sell them and make the open positions less and only 10 for a loss. So we're gonna talk about Chinese hotel chain Atur Lifestyles Holdings, ticker symbol ATAT. And it has updated its terms to now a downsized $57 million US IPO. Atur proposed in its latest filing to offer 4.75 million American depository shares, priced at 11 to 13 US bucks. And like I said, it is going public tomorrow. The firm operates a growing network of upper mid-scale hotels in China. It is based in Shanghai, China. It was founded to develop a network of upper mid-scale uh, hotel locations. Management is headed by founder and chairman CEO Ha Jun Wang, who has been with the company since the beginning. And uh, he was also EVP of China Logic Group Limited, a Nasdaq and Hong Kong listed firm. Atur has received $136 million in investments from C Pearl Worldwide, Legend Capital, um, Diviner, Trip.com, and GLV Holdings. So there's some notable whole, uh, investors there. The company seeks customers through online travel agencies. And as of March 31, 2021, it had 608 hotels under management in 131 cities with a total of 71,121 hotel rooms. Now, the total revenue for the company in 2019 was $239.2 million. In 2020, $239.1, pretty much unchanged. And for 2021, the first three months, it was up 107% at 64 for the first three months. So gross profit loss in 2019, 71 million, 2020, 63, 
and for the first three months of 21 of 17.1 million by the way i do have one big surprise to show you about this ipo which i think you will find very interesting gross margin on average 26 percent operating profit loss 13.9 2020 9.6 net income loss in 2019 9.2 2025.7 Cash flow from operations 2019 34.2 million and in 2020 18.1 million dollars. They have 135 million dollars in cash, 256 253 million in total liabilities. Free cash flow is positive 54.1 million, so that's good. Market cap at 2.1 billion, enterprise value 2.1 billion, price to sell 7.74, EV2 revenue 7.76, EV2 EBITDA 77.6, earnings per share is positive 13 cents. The float to outstanding shares ratio and this is the big surprise is at 13.5 percent which is even less than that of aspi aspi had the record of 2022 for the best flow to uh, outstanding shares ratio at 16 percent before that it was hkd at 18 percent now this one is at 13.5 percent and uh, so that makes them very volatile ipos which means there will be a point where they will pop really big that's just my opinion, of course. Uh, free cash flow you per share is 2.5%. Revenue growth rate, 107.6%. Valuation score, 3 out of 5. Uh, I'm not really ready to commit anymore to Chinese companies because of the fact that regulations in China can pop out of nowhere at any given time and can really crash a certain sector and so on. Just like lately, the Chinese government cracked down on the education stocks, right? On the education companies, I'm sorry, and uh, caused the Chinese education stocks to crash. So that's things that scare me. But as far as looking at this to take advantage of it for a good pop, I would look at it personally speaking for me. Uh, Bank of America is the underwriter. So overall, it is a Chinese IPO that I feel can give an opportunity for a really good pop. Uh, and maybe even in the long term, but it, you know, it's, it's, you can't really trust the Chinese regulars. They do uh, whatever they want, whenever they want. So that's that. Thank you very much for watching this video. I wish you all the best and take care.